And today's heading is Errors in Measurement. Uh, 20, is it the 20th or the 21st today? 20th. 20th. Oh, so Black Friday last week. So. Okay. So we're looking at errors in measurement. Now, remember when I said to you right at the beginning of this topic, you measure stuff, you've got to deal with, well, what units are you measuring in? But not only do you have to think about units, but you have to think about the fact that you're using, most of the time, physical instruments to actually measure these things out. And they're never going to be like 100% exact, a million decimal places, exact, precise. Okay. So errors are always going to creep in in some way. I'm going to talk to you about three kinds of errors. Um, just like before we had like all these different categories of units. So if you have like kind of three dot points here, the three kind of errors go basically like this. Number one, where do you start measuring from? Right, so I call these start errors. Now there are two common ways that you can do this and I'm going to draw some pictures for you. Um, if we go with say the, the ruler, okay? If you have a close look at the ruler, which I'm going to show you right now, that's not what I want. This, there we go. Now this one's pretty interesting because very, very close, but if you guys have got rulers, I doubt they'd be as close as this. Do you notice where zero begins? See that? There's a mark there, yeah? Bang, right there, of course. But it doesn't start, the actual ruler doesn't start from zero, right? So if I were to say, try and measure out, uh, where's a good example, okay? If I were trying to measure out, well, how far um, this actual projector screen is from the wall, okay? If I were trying to do that, okay? So I would say, well, I'm gonna, you know, ram the end of the ruler against the wall, and then I'm gonna take a measurement, okay? But of course, there's this little extra bit that isn't taken into account. Okay. So when I say start error, maybe you want to draw a little diagram, kind of like this. If you've got a ruler here. If your ruler, as most rulers do, do um, I think carpentry rulers are probably the exception. If your ruler doesn't start at zero, then a start error can creep in if you don't pay careful attention to that. Okay. So where does the instrument begin is what this, um, maybe I'll write that down for you. Um, that's what this error is about. Okay. Now, secondly, and related, right? Um, in this case, my ruler is intact, but frequently, measuring instruments are not going to be intact, and there's going to be damage, right? Yeah. So here's the um, diagram I might draw. If I have a ruler, and it's what you have, is yours? No, that's intact, that's right? Completely gone. Show me. There are no markings. Oh, okay. This is a different kind of problem. So I'll talk about that in a second. Here's the image I want you to draw. Suppose we have our ruler and it's just kind of like this one, but snapped off and it's kind of like, yeah, you know what? Two's the first number you've got. Okay, and then three, four, five, six, etc. Okay? So if you have a broken instrument, and I'm talking about, say, uh, lengths at the moment, if I were measuring mass, I have this really old set of scales at home for like use in a kitchen, and when there's nothing on it, it says 15 grams. Right? So that's kind of like the equivalent of this. It's broken to start with, so you kind of have to do this compensation. Obviously, if you measure from there, if I measure something, and it goes all the way up to three, four, five, it's not five centimeters long. If I begin at two, it's clearly three. Okay? So these are errors about where do you begin? Where do you start measuring from? The second overall category, and this is getting at what um, you mentioned, are scale errors. Okay? So firstly, let's talk about, well, if you've got, let's um, get rid of this. If you've got an instrument and um, you know the markings are gone, or even if the markings aren't gone, but if it's wrongly calibrated. So for instance, when you're getting a digital scale or something like that, you might notice on the scale, there's a button that says zero, right? And it's like, I want nothing to be there and I call that zero. Or maybe I have like a, a beaker or something like that. I place it on the scale and I want that to be zero. I don't want you to worry about the mass of the beaker. So if you do this wrong, if you calibrate incorrectly, perhaps you calibrate with one beaker, then you use another one that's slightly different, then you're going to introduce an error in the scale because that's what it changes, right? Or of course, um, as his one actually was, either wrongly calibrated or no calibration, right? If there's no scale that's visible or there's like, you know, it's been rubbed off or something like that, then that's going to cause you some problems. Okay? Now, the next one's a bit more interesting, and I'm going to use this to help me. So, 
you got a clock, okay? Now, what I want you to notice is kind of by the design of an analog clock, um, well, this one has three hands, yeah? And because of the way the hands work, they can't all sit like right on the surface of the clock. Uh, it looks like the order is, which makes sense, the hour hand is closest to the actual surface, then the minute hand is above it, and then the second hand is the one that's furthest out, okay? Now, what's interesting about this, and I'm gonna have to do this a few different ways, but if you look at this sort of side on, okay, rather than straight on, if you're looking at it side on, okay, you're actually not measuring to the right spot where the second hand is, okay? Draw a diagram here with me. We'll use a ruler for the sake of it being simple. If you've got this um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 object again, okay, and suppose, sorry, ruler rather, if you've got an object 0, 1, 2, 3. And that's where it is, okay? Again, if we sort of simulate, let's get another colour here, looking at it from a different angle, you can kind of imagine what's going to happen. Let's put an eye, say, over here. Okay? There's my eye. I didn't do very well in visual arts, as you can tell. Now, what's going to happen is you put that line of sight from the object, sorry, from the eye to the object to the ruler. Can you see what's going to happen? Put a dotted line like that. Just like with the clock, and you're looking at the second hand and you're not at the right angle, you're going to come across all the way to four, right? Um, or the same error could occur in the other direction if you're looking from this side, okay? So what we call this, does anyone know what this is called? It starts with a P. It's called parallax, right? So this is called parallax error, which is a really cool word. You could name a DC Comics bad guy after that. Parallax means you're looking at something and because you're not straight on, you're not getting an accurate result. And actually, honestly, it's very hard to do that all the time. Okay. One last category ever and of error, and it's kind of the most important one for us mathematically, even though we want to take all of them into account. Um, the last one is what we call the limits of the instrument. Is it EX or AX? The limits of the instrument. Now, let me get this picture of um, my meter ruler back on the screen for you. I don't know why I just put this one down. Okay, now, there are actually two sides to this ruler. Um, you can see that they have different scales, okay? Uh, I just want you to focus on the top one. Uh, what are the units actually being marked out there? Like here, 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 here. They're centimeters, yeah? I know it's a bit hard to see because I've zoomed in so far. But each one of these is one centimeter long, okay? So as a result, if I put an object against this ruler, and suppose it's, oh, I don't know, say that long, okay? So it's somewhere in between these measurements, okay? You kind of don't know, is it, you know, where do I put my hands? Is it 2.3, is it 2.4, is it 2.5? It's very hard to tell with any accuracy because you have no actual markings on your instrument, right? So when we say the limits of the instrument, we mean a ruler like this, right? The closest it can measure is to the closest centimeter, right? Even if I can't know, ooh, 2.1, 2.2, I can definitely say of a point like here, it's gonna be closer to one side versus the other. Does that make sense? This is the idea of rounding, isn't it? So I can say, oh, I'm gonna round down for sure, because look at that distance. It must be closer this way, even if I'm not sure how much closer. 